What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finished Coding. This is part 2 of our projectile simulator, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now if you've not checked out part one, uh, please check that out before you come here because we've completed uh, roughly one fourth of our program and you're going to be pretty lost. So I'll leave a card right here, make sure you check that out and come here. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you watch part one and let's actually continue with our ball sprite. So click uh, choose a sprite and you want to, uh, in the uh, scratch library, you want to click this ball sprite. Uh, I'm going to head over to its costume and delete every costume except this uh, purple one because I think it's going to contrast well with the blue background which we will uh, put later on in the game. I'm going to set the size to 70 so that it's more proportional with our gun size and yeah, I think this is good. Uh, next thing I'm actually going to do before I even program the ball is to paint our ground sprite. And our ground sprite is going to be a simple rectangle. Now the color you want to look for is color 31, saturation 66 and brightness 100. So you can change this um, as you wish or uh, you can make it a brown uh, ground in case you wanted to. I'm just going to make a grassy green uh, ground right here. So I'm going to extend it in both the axes and center it as well. Okay, there we are. Next thing I want to do is to make sure this ground goes to the maximum bottom position. And uh, you can actually move it first, okay, and then uh, uh, view the saved positions in the motion, uh, motion category. So this is its position. And make sure you rename the sprite to ground. So when the green flag is clicked, we just want it to go to this position. And uh, that's it. Okay. Now you want to head over to the ball sprite. And here's where our main code actually begins. Because the ball is going to uh, resemble our entire projectile motion and uh, this is basically the main part of our program. So when the green flag is clicked, what we want to do is to initially go to and now head over to your sensing category and I'll tell you what I'm doing in a second. And you want to grab this background off uh, and you want to change it to X position of gun and duplicate it and just change the second one to Y position of gun. And you want to say go to uh, X position of gun and go to Y, Y position of gun. And this is going to take you to the center of the gun right here. Now when we're moving the gun with our mouse, we obviously don't want the ball to be showing. So what we can do is to add one block of code which says hide. That's it. Now you can see the ground is actually obstructing our view of the gun and we don't really want this to happen. So all you have to do is to add one more line of code which is um, in your uh, looks category and you want to say go to back layer. So you would see the code as go to front layer in the um, code section but you want to change that to back layer. Okay, now let's test that out. Perfect. Now head over to your ball sprite and if you remember correctly we actually broadcast it shoot when the space bar was pressed and this is when our program actually begins. So uh, head over to events and say when key space bar is pressed and first of all, we want it to show when the space bar is pressed. So add that right there. Now we want to actually uh, initialize a few more variables. First variable I'm going to initialize is called time and it's obviously going to store the time, but it's not going to be storing just, uh, a, it's not going to just store once. Okay, instead it's going to constantly update every 0.1 seconds. Okay. Uh, now we want to set the time to be initially zero. Okay, that's it. Now we want a few more variables and I'll explain what these things do in a minute. Uh, just follow me along right here. So first one is ux, then I'm going to say uy, then I'm going to say sx, uh, then I'm going to say sy. So there you are. So I've got all these variables right here and uh, here's what each of them is going to hold. So first, when the user actually customizes the initial velocity, what we're going to do when the space bar is pressed is to split the initial velocity into X and Y components. Okay. And in order to do this, we'll actually require another variable, which I'm going to call angle or theta. Okay. I'm going to call it theta. Okay. 
Um, now I'm going to interject right here. This uh, part is going to contain a bit of trigonometry and vector algebra. So if you do not completely understand, it's all right. Um, I've added some further learning resources in the description box below. And I'm also showing you some images which will kind of make you understand uh, what I'm trying to say. Okay. So like I was saying, the initial velocity is broken down into x and y components using some basic trigonometry. And the x component uh, and the velocity in the x component is going to be stored in ux and the velocity in the y component is going to be stored inside uy. Now the s of x and s of y are going to be independent of each other and the s of x is going to be uh, derived from the velocity in the x direction and you guessed it, the s of y is going to be derived from the velocity in the y direction. Now, in case you're wondering why I use S, it's because S is generally used for displacement and that's what our, our S of X and S of Y are going to be storing. Not the distance or the current X and Y positions, it's instead going to be storing the displacement. And using that, we'll actually move the ball sprite and that in turn is going to resemble a projectile. Now, don't worry if you didn't completely understand me, it'll, go, it'll all make sense very soon. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to set our angle. Okay, and this is important right here. Now our, um, our reference line, okay, this is theta. So our reference line is actually going to be where my mouse is. Okay, it's going to be our ground. So if we want, uh, if we want the sprite when it's pointing top, okay, to set the angle to be 90 degrees and it's currently zero, what we need to do is to set theta to uh, 90 minus the direction of the gun. Okay. So fill in 90 right there and you want to head over to your sensing category and grab this backdrop of a stage and you want to uh, change it to a uh, direction of gun. That's going to be our uh, theta, which is the angle. Now uh, using some basic trigonometry, okay, you would have the UY and I've added an image right here. Okay, so hope that helps. You want to set UY to be equals to the sine of theta times the um, initial velocity. So head over to your operators and you'd see this absolute value of, and you want to change it to sine of, okay? So sine of theta times, and you'd need a multiplication operator for this. So sine of theta times the initial velocity. There we are. Now you want to duplicate this, okay? And you want to say ux, is going to be equals to the cos of theta times the initial velocity and again uh, make sure you refer to the image that I showed you earlier in order to understand this if you do not know trigonometry already. Okay now our s of x and s of y. Now first it's important to note that our s of x and s of y store the displacement okay. So initially since our displacement is zero we're just going to be in our current x and y positions. And that is in the center of the gun sprite. And what we want to do is to initially set s of x uh, to be the uh, sprite's x position. And we want to set s of uh, y to be the sprite's y position. There we are. Okay. Now uh, we actually want to show, uh, now we actually want to enter the main game loop. So, I mean, your show would actually be more suitable here, but it really doesn't make a difference since we're just initializing variables. So now we want to actually enter the main game loop, and this is going to be a repeat until loop. So head over to control and grab a repeat until. Now the condition we're going to have inside that loop is uh, to check if we are touching the ground. Okay. So make sure you add that uh, bar right there from the sensing category. And now what you want to do is to set, okay. I'm sorry, not set, you want to change, okay, you want to change S of X, okay, and here uh, you need to know a few more motion formulas, and I'm attaching an image right here in order to help you, um, help you with it. So you want to set, uh, if, okay, before that, if you actually, uh, if you know a bit of um, motion in 1D, okay, what you, uh, you, you'd probably have heard of the formula that the displacement is equals to the initial velocity times the time plus half times the acceleration times the time squared. Okay, 
and uh, again I'll refer to further resources in the description if you have no clue what I'm talking about. So think of the uh, I'll think of what the terms would be when uh, we're calculating the displacement in the x direction. So our initial velocity would not be the initial velocity from the program, it would instead be the ux. Um, our time is obviously going to be the time itself and uh, if you uh, initially think that our acceleration is just going to be the gravity, okay, you're, you're actually wrong because gravity only pulls you downwards, it does not pull you to the side. So our x component actually has no acceleration at all and would only stop when the ball touches the ground. Now, obviously note here we're not taking friction into account. If we are taking a um, friction into account, it would be a little more complicated, but it's pretty simple. So comment down below if you want a program with um, air drag and friction and so on. Okay, so you want to set s of x to be just ux times the time. So head over to your operators and grab a multiplication and you want to put those two terms inside that, inside those multiplication signs. Okay, there we are. So set u at, uh, s of x to that, uh, change s of x by that. And now you want to duplicate this and now instead of s of x, you want to say s of y. Okay, now uh, it's not going to be ux, it's going to be uy, which is your uh, velocity in the y direction. But in the y direction, we do have an acceleration and that is um, going to pull us down. So anything that pulls us down in vector algebra is considered to be negative. So our acceleration is not going to be just gravity, it's going to be negative 1 times gravity. Now from the formula, you'd be thinking half times negative 1 times the gravity. So we could just say negative 0.5 times gravity and yup, you are right. So first you want to grab a plus sign and put this inside the first part of it. And now you want to grab four multiplications, okay? So nest them inside one another. Okay, the first thing you want to do is to say plus negative 0 0.5 times uh, the gravity times the time squared, okay? And the reason we didn't include all this once again is because our, uh, our acceleration is not gravity, it's instead zero. And uh, basically this entire thing is just going to evaluate to zero all the time. So no need to mention it at all. Okay, so we've changed our S of X and S of Y. Now how exactly does this help us with our ball sprite? And a uh, thing to note is that yes, the displacement is changing and we are actually going to be making the ball move by the displacement. So all we have to do is to simulate, uh, to simulate our projectile motion is to just add one line of code, okay, which says go to, and you'll find this in the motion category, go to s of x and s of y. Okay, there we are. Now, if we run this program, we're going to get really weird bugs. And that's because we're not incrementing time by one. So our time is going to constantly change. And this is the reason our program would actually terminate at some point. So you want to uh, say change time by not one. I'm going to make it point 0.1 so that we have a higher degree of accuracy. Now again, if we just run this program, this is just going to run really, 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 really fast. So what we want to do is to add a small time lag okay, that is based on what we're changing time by. So we're going to change it exactly, we're going to wait exactly the amount of uh, time we change the time by, so that it's a real life simulation. So now let's test the program out. So here we are, boom, we shot it, and the thing moved, and it seems to go pretty well. Now I've had gravity equals 10 and the initial velocity equals 20, so I'm going to change them to initial velocity 11 and gravity 10 just to see if this thing works pretty well. So you can, as you can see, the ball moved pretty well and it took 3.2 seconds for the ball to actually touch the ground. And there you have it, you have a complete projectile motion. Now there are a few more additional things that you could do um, to make this even better. And uh, I'm actually out of time right here, I'm almost 15 minutes into the video. So what I'll do is I'll add an additional part three uh, where we're going to improve the UI um, and also add in a bit uh, more features to our program.
okay so thanks for watching everyone the next video will be releasing as part of our scratch maths and simulations upload um, within a few more days so make sure you stay tuned to that by subscribing and hitting the notification bell if you made it this far please help me out by giving me a like and that would really help uh, to boost my rating on the youtube algorithm so that's it for today guys thanks for watching i'll see you all later bye bye